Most people who have been involved in creating agile frameworks and methodologies uh, got together and created the Agile Manifesto, which you probably know, most likely know. But let's talk about it. It's important because it helps us understand what Agile is about. And it also, uh, well, you will have some questions about it in the exam. So we have a set of uh, values here. Uh, we value items on the left hand side more than those on the right hand side. We value them more. It doesn't mean that we don't care about items on the right. We still appreciate them. But items on the left are more important. The first one is that we value individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Uh, it's very common in companies. They are really focused on processes and tools. Both of them are not effective enough. Tools, for example, uh, processes are at least better than tools. I see many companies who think that they can only implement uh, an ERP, uh, an enterprise project management system or a document management system and everything will be okay. It will fix all the problems. No. No, it's not that easy. Actually, you can implement any tool you want and it won't make any changes. What you really need is a difference, is a change in your system, at least a change in your processes. And even the processes. When you're dealing with routine work, processes are really important. And uh, in the past, we were more dealing with routine work. Especially, remember, Taylorism was all about processes. Uh, but nowadays, most of the routine work are done by machines, not by human beings. And what we have as projects are actually creative work. All our current projects are in different uh, degrees creative and innovative. And when you're dealing with something creative and innovative, you need to take care of people, individuals and interactions. People are not pieces of a machine, a perfect machine. You don't have that perfect machine. You can just switch them. Okay, this, this person is a tester, for example. It's not working pro properly. I'll take it out. I will put in another tester. And as, as long as I'm sure this person is a tester, the whole machine will work properly. That's not right. It doesn't work. I sometimes think, well, we talked about the difference between predictive and adaptive systems. People usually say that agile is something new, something modern. Is it? I mean, can you think that no one in the whole history of mankind thought about adaptive way of working until a few decades ago? I can't. I usually ask uh, the participants in my courses if they can think about any examples. And so far, the best example I could get was wars. People have been fighting all the time in the old days. Can you imagine an army going to a war with a predictive approach? They're always, they have been using adaptive systems, both in the war and in the battles. And that's not the only example. We have lots of examples. The point is that we have been using both methods in the, in the history, but when we started, uh, structuring the management methods in those days for any reason uh, the one that was picked was the predictive system that's why we have been only thinking of the right and structured management method as predictive ones but after a while recently in the modern days we revised our decision we started using adaptive methods as a right way of managing work, projects or programs or portfolios, anything. Uh, we had created 
frameworks and methodologies, we have names for them, and that is the difference in the modern day. That's not an invention, in my opinion. <coughs> so, it was the first value. The second one is that we value working software over comprehensive documentation. In traditional predictive systems, let's say we want to use Waterfall for IT development, we create a number of documents. For example, requirement specification. And one of the things we want to do with that document is to create a mutual understanding between the customer and the supplier. Does it work? No. The customer says that it's okay, but at the end, at the end of the project, when you create the product exactly based on your requirement and specification, in your opinion, the customer doesn't like it. So what does it tell? It's, it's telling us that comprehensive documentation is not the right tool for this. What is the right tool? Working software. Your customer, the best thing your customer understands is the working software. Create something small, let them work with it, play with it for a while, and tell you how they feel. What's the best next action? That's adaptation. The third one is that we value customer collaboration over contract negotiation. In predictive systems, we, whenever we want to make any changes in our project, we, have, we may have to go back and revise our design, our architecture, and some of the codes we have created before. But in adaptive systems, the consequences of change are minimized. So, we don't have to claim for anything. Instead of uh, contract negotiations, we have a comfortable environment. However, however, we have something important here. In predictive systems, uh, we spend a lot of time together, the customer and the supplier. We define something and then the supplier starts working. But in here, in Agile, you remember, we are deciding all the time. We are using adaptation. We have to have access to the customer all the time. Whenever we want to uh, review the increment we have created, it's done by the customer and user representatives. So they should be there. And besides that, when we want to define the scope of the next piece of work, we may have some questions. Maybe we, we did, uh, we had the, uh, the communications with the customer before, but when we want to start working, we see, okay, I don't really understand this part. So you have to go to the customer and ask them. You don't want to create something they don't like. So still we need to have access to them. On the other hand, uh, when we are working during the iteration, we, for many different reasons, we want to finish each piece of work during the iteration. We don't want, we want to wait until the end of the iteration. And when we want to be sure that something is 100% done, we need to have all the tests, including user acceptance testing. So when it comes to user acceptance testing, again, we have to get in touch with our customer, ask them for someone, a user representative, for them to come and help us understand if what we have created is exactly what they wanted. That's agility. So we need to have access to them. That's why customer collaboration is really required for us here. Sometimes we have customers who say you, they want you to be agile just because it's a fashion nowadays everyone say we want to be agile even though they don't, they don't know what agility is and they are not ready to accept the consequences and everything else but well the customer says i want you to be agile but on the other hand they don't want to spend time with you it's not going to work they tell you we want you to be agile and then ask you for upfront documentation that's nonsense that's contradiction or they tell you we want you to use a scrum and then they force you to accept a fixed price contract. That's contradiction, that doesn't work. 
but since it is fashion everyone is talking about agility that's okay well that's one of the reasons I can earn money by creating this kind of training at least all right the last uh, value is responding to change over following a plan we still have planning in Agile, but our planning is different. It's not predictive. It allows for the product to evolve. It allows for adaptation. Instead of following a plan, as we discussed before, that was the value for us. Now in here, we need to adapt. And when we want to adapt, we need to receive new ideas from the customer. We need to receive their feedback that that's our engine for adaptation they are usually still referred to as changes i don't know maybe that's not the best way of ref referring to them but they are well in a way changes those changes uh, it's not only the fact that we are open to changes we need the changes in Agile. In a real Agile environment, you cannot be adaptive without having change requests. That's a huge difference. So, pay attention to this. Well, it was about the uh, Agile Manifesto. A number of Agile principles also uh, follow the Agile Manifesto, which we are going to talk about next.